Okay, I think we are a little bit beyond 8 o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I want to welcome everybody to this session of the uh, Jackson County Board of Education and uh, our one of our first, um, or actually our very first budget hearing for the upcoming fiscal year. And uh, as, as our custom, we want to take this uh, time for prayer and for silent reflection, things going on in our county and our nation, so give that one a place. Thank you. And with that, this, this session is now called to order. Uh, first thing on our agenda today is to consider a motion to approve the agenda as it is presented. I move that we strike item B under transfers. Okay, so B under transfers. We have a motion to strike B from our agenda. Is there a I will second that. Strike. Is there any discussion on striking that? Is there a reason we're striking it or why we're striking it? We need to be sure we're in compliance with the tenure law. And we're going to take a little time. I recommend that we take a little time to look at it. Thank you, Dr. Yes. Um, we will now vote on that strike just so that we are, everybody's in agreement with removing that item. Mr. West? Yes. Uh, Mr. Story? Yes. Mr. Gant? Yes. Dr. Guest? Yes. Myself is yes. So we will strike B under transfer. And now we will consider a motion to approve the agenda that has uh, now been uh, amended. I make the motion to approve the agenda. Okay, uh, the story makes a motion to approve the agenda with its modification. Is there a second? Second. Dr. Yes, second for that. Is there any discussion about any further items on that? Okay, now let's, let's move to a vote. Mr. West? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Story? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Mr. Kent. Yes. Myself. Yes. And this uh, agenda with its modification has been approved. Okay. Um, we have uh, an item that had been added to our agenda since we had our revision, and uh, that was. A motion to approve the 2017-18 salary schedule. And Jeff, if you'll just briefly tell us what you, what you told me about those salary schedules. Okay. Please. This is uh, just a bring forward from the previous year intact the salary schedule is based on the uh, minimum salary matrix that the state has put out. And then we have some small uh, Salary schedules also included uh, with our local positions uh, that uh, were last year increased by 4% in accordance with the salary raise. But of course, we don't have a raise this year, so they just come forward intact. And it's just, we just need to do that. Okay. And this is something that we'll do annually with approving these salary schedules. So what we, what we have before us is the same schedule as, as last year that reflected those 2% and 4% raises for our employees. Okay. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the salary schedules for 2017-18? I'll make that motion. Second. Mr. Story seconds. Is there any discussions or questions that Jeff can answer? Do you know me to vote, Mr. West? Yes. Mr. Story? Yes. Dr. Guess? Yes. Mr. Gant? Yes. Myself is yes. And those salary schedules have been approved. Under personnel actions, under retirements, uh, consider a motion to accept the retirement of Sandra Vernon, effective 10 1 17. I move to accept the retirement of Miss Vernon. Mr. West makes that motion. Is there a second? 
Second. I guess seconds that motion and discussion. Ms. Vernon, is it Paint Rock Valley, correct? That's correct. Right. Um, move to vote, Mr. West? Yes. Mr. Story? Yes. Uh, yes? Yes. Mr. Gant? Yes. Accepted, yes. Motion's accepted. I uh, consider a motion to accept the retirement of Mark Cooper, effective 10 1 17. Mark is uh, maintenance personnel. I'll make that motion. Second. Yes, seconds. Any discussion? Move to vote, Mr. West? Yes. Mr. Story? Yes. Yes. Mr. Gant? Yes. Myself? Yes. Most carries. Under transfers, we have one item now. Uh, item A, consider a motion to transfer Kristen Light from 50% teacher at Bridgeport Elementary, 50% teacher at Bridgeport Middle to 100% teacher at Bridgeport Middle, effective 9 8 17. I'll make a motion to approve item A. Store makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Yeah, seconds that. Is there any discussion? Move to vote, Mr. West? Yes. Mr. Story? Yes. Uh, yes? Yes. Mr. Dent? Yes. Myself is a yes. That motion carries. Under employee, consider approach to employee Michael Congo as an eight hour custodian at Paint Rock Valley, effective 9 8 17, and that's pending a background clearance. I move we employ Mr. Congo. All right. Mr. West makes a motion. Second. Mr. Gant seconds that. Is there any discussion? Um, we'll move to a vote now. Mr. West? Yes. Mr. Story? Yes. Dr. Guess? Yes. Mr. Gant? Yes. Myself is yes. And that most curious. Um, item B, consider a motion to employ Michael Benefield as a countywide bus driver. Effective nine five seventeen. I'll make that motion. Second. Mr. West second. Is there any discussion? Is that uh, Paint Rock Valley? That is Paint Rock Valley, yes, sir. Okay. Um, any more discussion? Move to vote, Mr. West. Yes. Mr. Story? Yes. Mr. Dr. Guess? Yes. Mr. Yen? Yes. Myself is yes. Motion carries. Under coaching, consider a motion to accept the resignation of Ryan McCarver as his coach at Skyline JV Girls Basketball. I'll make the motion. Story makes that motion. Second. Mr. West seconds. Any discussion? Move to vote, Mr. West. Yes. Mr. Story. Yes. Dr. Guess. Yes. Mr. Gant. Yes. And myself is yes. Motion carries. Consider a motion to approve Chance McCarver as a coach at Skyline JV Girls Basketball. I make that move. Mr. Gant makes a motion. Second. Mr. West seconds that. Any discussion? Do you know we'll move to vote, Mr. West? Yes. Mr. Story? Yes. Uh, yes? Yes. Mr. Ant? Yeah. Myself? Yes. Motion carries. I guess I should abstain from that one. I abstain from that. Strike my yes. That's four yeses. Um, consider a motion to approve Jesse McCutcheon as a volunteer faculty coach at Hollywood. I make that move. Uh, Mr. Ant makes a motion. Second. Mr. West seconds that. Any discussion? We'll move to vote, Mr. West? Yes. Mr. Story? Yes. Dr. Guess? Yes. Mr. Gant? Yes. Myself, yes. Uh, just to explain on, on B, chances my son in law by marriage, so I guess I wasn't thinking about that when I decided to vote on it to begin with, so I abstained on B, and that's the reason. Under D, consider a motion to approve. Raymond Townsend Farrow is a non-faculty volleyball coach at North Santa Mountain. I'll make, I'll make that motion. Second. Mr. Story seconds. Uh, any discussion? <laughs> Move to vote, Mr. West? Yes. Story? Yes. Dr. Yeah, Guess? Yes. Mr. Kent? Yes. Myself, yes, motion carries. Under contracts, consider a motion to rescind the supplemental contract between the Jackson County Board of Education and Shannon Duke's speech pathologist. And uh, that was attached, and I think, in our email. We have, we have, I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Story, second. Any discussion? Move to vote, Mr. West? Yes. Mr. Story? Yes. Dr. Guess? Yes. Mr. Gant? Yes. Myself? Yes. And we are a portion on our agenda where we will now begin our first public hearing for our budget.
So I appreciate everybody coming out today. Uh, we've got a few copies uh, of the document here. Uh, it, you know, especially anybody that's from the general public, we want to give them uh, a copy. This looks like it's all the public. So we've got these other copies. Uh, on the, uh, I guess we just kind of pass these around. Uh, this is on the website, so uh, if you have your iPad, you can pull it up. Uh, but it's under the finance section. Uh, it is under the budget tab. Uh, so uh, the, uh, I'm going to have to do this rotating on these uh, on this document, but. Uh, I'm going to go to the very end of the document. Uh, read five in the uh, that's uh, from the public. I was going the wrong way. Yep, I did. I just have to keep flipping it around until. Uh, it's upside down. Does it look better? Maybe, maybe. Uh, but this is uh, the document that uh, where you can respond. You know, the public can respond, and we've got the fifteenth to actually submit this to the state. So, if you have any comment about a particular school, mentions, you know. Uh, down in the document, it actually lists information by school. And um, so if there's any particular questions about your your school or in general, you know, you can fill that out and, and bring it to me. And maybe we can bring that up at the next budget hearing, which is scheduled uh, next week. I've actually done this 10 years and I've never had anybody do a response yet. I rarely have many people attend these meetings. Uh, I think this is one of my best attended uh, meetings uh, so far. Uh, it's a quite, you know, it's a hundred page document, so it's, it's a lot of stuff, and I'm going to try to bring out some things that maybe you might can gain something from. Uh, I can make this thing go faster. But, students to achieve and succeed. Uh, this, uh, these numbers here are off the of STI as of yesterday. So they're nothing, it's nothing set in stone. There's just some possibilities of some numbers. Uh, at 5,242 students, uh, that's another 100 student reduction from the ABM from the previous year. And I'm going to mention some things about how that does hurt us. You know, it hurts, you know, uh, and there's a variety of reasons, you know, uh, factory wise, uh, uh, a lot of people taking homeschool options uh, but you know we it is what it is and we've just got to uh, uh, you know do our best to stay very sensitive to the minimal amount it takes to run your school and I think that's one part that I never tried to get 
involved with. I've depended on the professional educators, uh, Mr. Dukes, uh, the staff here, uh, to, to look at each school and properly, what I call, engineer the school for what it takes to run and not have one additional employee, but not have one too few employees to get the job done. And that's something that I don't have any real clue about. I just can tell them how much it costs, and it costs a lot. Uh, so we, uh, uh, you know, we're going to continue to have to crank down our operations every year that we have these reductions. We're going to have to figure out how to do more with less. And we've got to uh, just keep uh, our finger on that pulse always and whenever we can do some savings to do it. But we also, uh, we need to get some more students, you know, and I don't know what that's going to, I, I, I don't know, we, and it just amazes me moving into Jackson County that everybody in Alabama is not trying to move to Jackson County, you know, being here. But they just don't know. Maybe they'll figure it out one day. Uh, one of the most important documents in building this budget <coughs> is this is this slide here, and this is the foundation program, and it shows uh, very good key information uh, it shows that we went down approximately 110 students. Uh, as a result, they cut uh, over four and a half units from our allocation. And that might not sound like much, but it, it really does affect us. Uh, and listed here are all the items uh, you'll see comparisons 2018 to 2017 in the amounts of reductions in foundation salary, fringe benefits, of uh, the current expense is a very important thing. That's what we basically are to pay all the utilities, all the operations, all the support personnel, including me out of those funds and whenever they talk about in the legislature decreasing that we go no 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 you know, so, because that's an easy thing for someone who doesn't know that, that is a very important thing but that is really kind of a uh, it's not very accurate description because it does cover all of our utilities and all of our support people. It doesn't come close. It's kind of like transportation. You know, they give us money to cover 70 or 80. What, what's the percent now that we're, they're actually covering on transportation? 80, 80, okay. Well, you know, so it's probably about like that in other current expense. It's probably uh, covers about that much. <coughs> But uh, there was an increase, you see, there, and that's, that's good. The legislature's getting the message that that's a very important area. It doesn't need to be cut. Uh, you'll see that uh, all of the, the next area is all of the allocations on student materials. All of those increased to some extent. So that was good. Even though our, even though our units went down, they actually increase the amount that they're sitting in for that. Even though, you know, so even though our number of uh, units were down, our dollars went slightly up. Uh, textbook did go down, but that's the only area. That, but it just went down slightly. Uh, okay, this gets into the big dollars that went down the uh, foundation program 
and it shows the total of state funds going down by 538,000, but that's not all state funds. That's only the state funds that are listed on that particular slide. And it, it lists those programs somewhere on there. Uh, foundation, High Hopes, one percent salaries, uh, tech career, transportation, risk, preschool. It's not all state funds. I'm going to give you a list of all state funds, and you can see how we get hit overall with this more significant. Uh, and uh, oh yeah, another thing that happened is because our property taxes went up. If you look at local funds, the foundation program. Uh, match requirement went up. So not only did they cut our funds back, but what we have to put in to participate in the foundation program went up almost a hundred thousand dollars. Because the property taxes went up. And how much property taxes does the ten mill system get? We get zero. We get no property taxes. We basically have to share the whole thing with the state. Uh, they cut us they look at what our property tax is, they look at what our foundation program is, and then they'll say, well, how much property taxes do you get? And we say, we report that, and they say, we're going to give you the difference. So that's the reason we don't get any property taxes. If someone gets 11 meals, they get a thousand times more property taxes than we get. At least they get the one meal. So uh, if you see somebody say, oh, look, you get some 14 and 10 meal. It's a significant difference because they at least get four meals. Uh, so, uh, what's really bad is when, uh, well, that's, that's, that's what this is. Yeah, this is the difficult, you know, this is kind of the bad scenario where you actually have uh, reduced funding and higher uh, required match. Okay, and this just is a listing of all this, the individual schools and the different uh, uh, units that are earned. Let me see if I can turn this around. Yeah, I guess wrong. Okay. So you got. Uh, you know, we have some, we have had really good resources that have, that's allowed this to happen. <coughs> what we've got is a, a lot of schools in the 200 or less student range. When you have that, you have, you don't qualify for a lot of things. You don't qualify for assistant principals. You don't qualify, uh, but maybe for half of a, a counselor, half a librarian. So it really is tough. It's you know uh, to operate like that. So it'd be really great, you know, especially those that are around the full hundred. Uh, upper 400s, if they could jump over 500, that would make all the difference in the world in that they would earn the assistant principal. They would earn the full counselor. Uh, the, uh, they even earn uh, potentially a counselor and a half. Yeah, so that would be terrific if that could happen. And, and we just need something good to happen uh, need to uh, get some kind of inflow of students or even bring back some students that might have gone homeschooling. Uh, it would be great to bring them back and get over those 500 uh, levels. If we could get uh, all those 400s up over 500 <coughs> and maybe uh, that, that would just be a, a terrific thing. Uh, Okay, this is the actual budget. 
Actually, before I do this, I want to go down to some, some other things. This, this is, I only put two budget slides in because he writ additional little privately done budget slides just to kind of let you know what we're looking, what the problem is. It's because of this reduced students, we're having uh, a decrease in you know, our funding. So we have to continually crank down every May and get, and, and we do a really good job of, of figuring out exactly what budget, what, what our units are earned and, and try to, to stay within that and still make these schools operational. Uh, some of this is, uh, you know, like the federal, they're trying to get their house in order. You know, it's, it's a <coughs> reduction, but it's not overwhelming, but it is an irritation in that our local dollars are actually, our spendable local dollars are not really, they're looking they're not looking that great because of the TBA went down about 300,000. Okay, so because that went down, and then I just, we over budgeted last year on some local revenues that really don't affect us in the, in the, uh, in the special revenue area. It's not our money anyway. So I'm not really worried about that local re reduction in that I know that basically the only problem is TVA. The sales tax and the property taxes are holding up. So that's a good thing. But uh, hopefully TVA will not keep drifting down uh, from a million three to a million area. Uh, hopefully it, it, it'll hold in that million area. But, but maybe not. So, uh, so the Fed's okay. The local, other than TVA, is doing fine. Uh, and then the other is just grants that we won't <coughs> know about until later on in the year. Hopefully some of those will come through. So we might be okay in that area, even though it looks bad right, right there with the reduction. It's just a week those things don't materialize to later in the year. But the big issue is the state. The state reduction of all, you know, almost 900,000. These are the areas of state revenue on this next slide of the individual reductions. And pretty much everything took a little bit of a hit. Uh, now, we're hoping there might be that other state reduction. We're hoping maybe something will materialize as far as grants, state grants later on in the year. We're hoping that that might uh, come back. But pretty much the rest of it's gone. The foundation, they've cut slotted customers, cut our nurses, cut our ARI and may continue to cut that. We don't really know really what direction that program is going. Uh, it's, a, it's something that we lean on heavily uh, with a lot of small elementary schools. Uh, yes. Let me ask you a question. The uh, notice that the pre-K has gone down fifty-seven thousand dollars. Is that something you anticipate happening? Continue over the years. Well, big <coughs> influx of money to begin with to start those programs in well, state see, they, I don't want to say <coughs> negative. I mean, we're, going, we're glad to have the pre K program, but they kind of get you hooked in by paying for a lot of up, There's a lot of upfront expenses mm -hmm. for pre K, a lot of building or, or, or equipping classrooms. Once that gets done, then they kind of back, you know, back up on the funding. And you're left kind of having to fund a good bit of that locally. Okay. 
It's really not designed that well for systems like us that don't have a lot of discretionary money, which there is such a difference between our budget and our budget here and let's say a school system, a city school system, even a local, not, not maybe Mid Jackson County, but not very far off, you'll find systems with all kinds of them from high property taxes and uh, a lot of economic activity and very low enrollments. You know, they don't need a lot of foundation help. So it's such a diverse situation. Compare, and you cannot compare us to them. We can't act like them. But we try to and try to give our students everything we can. So we'll continue doing that as, as long as we can, even in the pre-K program. But at some point, you might have to, uh, you know, everything might have to be looked at. So we don't, uh, you know, it, it, if things continue to go down in population, we're going to have to continue to look, and the choices are going to get harder and harder. But I believe that somebody's going to come to their senses and some big industry is going to crank up here and there's going to be a big inflow and we're not even going to have places to put the students. So. Okay, uh, the Alabama ahead was a big uh, computer initiative and I don't really know where that's headed, if that's going to continue, but hopefully maybe something materialize in that area. Uh, I know that there's some technology money that they were wrangling over in the legislature, and I don't know exactly where that stands as far as, you know, if it's going to get out here and, you know, who knows. But, uh, but that's the way it stands now. And, and part of the problem is, you know, uh, we just don't know. We have to budget only what we know we're going to get. So all these promises and hopes we can't put in the budget, but we have traditionally had some of those come through. So we're, we're definitely hopeful on that. But that's the big culprit. And because of that, because of this big reduction, because of this overall big reduction, we're having, we're showing this as our budget. And the general fund, which I'm predicting, you see October 1st, I'm predicting that we're gonna be one month operating. I could be wrong, but I believe we are. But it's just gonna be a little temporary where we get up there and then we're going to fall back. Mr. Middleton, so the, the 3.7 million is your one month operating? That's approximately, I think it's three, six something. Okay. It's, uh, I'm going to have my phone here. Uh, based on, based on those numbers right there, you can take the 41, the total expenditures in the general fund column, 41773839 and divide that by 12. That's actually, it's 3,481,000 is one month, according to that. But that changes, and officially, one month's not based on budget numbers. It's made on actual numbers as of September 30th, 2017. So we'll know that about mid-month, next month. Thank you. So I'm saying there by that budget that we're, but we're, like I say, we're being conservative. We're not showing a lot of growth. Uh, we're not showing things that we don't know about sure but that we're hoping to get but uh but that's that's 
what it looks like right now, today. Uh, the uh, I'm in the capital project area. You see that we we're pretty healthy there uh, because we we we're keeping our capital projects to a minimum right now as a safety net. And part of the way we've been able to achieve one month is by looking at different maintenance areas and trying to, whenever we can justify that it's capital related, such as buses, which traditionally has not been bought out of capital funds, but we've checked it out and, and checked with examiners to make sure that that's okay to use. We're gonna be able to get out of <coughs> hopefully get out of most of our bus debt and actually buy, start buying buses. And the plan is to actually start buying buses on a cash basis in the future. Uh, that's, that's our plan. Uh, it just depends on how much we have to dip down into those capital funds. But we've got to stay very conservative in our capital projects right now because that's our only safety net if we go below this one month operate. Uh, okay, uh, and so, you know, there are more detailed statements down in the uh, document about uh, the individual uh, items of revenue. You can see them listed there and whether they're showing up as general fund or capital project fund or debt service fund. Uh, you get into all kinds of detailed statements about the, uh, and then you know, that's all the revenues and then the expenditures. Then you get into the individual school budgeted uh, expenditures. So that first one listed, Bridgeport Middle was listed, and I've been all of the cities are listed. Uh, and uh, we have uh, sorry to rush through this. Uh, the other big area that we are uh, major component of the uh, budget worksheets is the uh, this uh, supplemental information before it shows the ABM and then all the teachers that were funded all the units that we earned, uh, and then it shows the actual numbers of teachers that we replaced, and uh, that's system-wide, and then the first report after that is the county-wide, and that's county-wide what we replaced, and then the next one is the middle school, Bridgeport Middle, and it lists what we've earned and we've replaced at uh, Bridgeport Middle. And you have some little pieces and parts like points, something other, because you'll have somebody that's funded at several different schools traveling around. So that's the reason you have those uh, not whole numbers there. Mr. Huh? Uh, when you have the number for the total for the system, is that uh, is it in four weeks or by positions, jobs? Because you have some that, that have more than one position. It's, it's, uh, it's it, 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 it would be, that would be, it's the FTE, full time equivalent. So, I guess you could have, I'm sorry, you know, somebody that's a full time bus driver and they have a full time bus driver. Okay, but they have to have one that's a full time Maybe not a, but four hours. So, yeah, actually, so that 
So that would be one plus a half. Yeah. So so you have some of that. Uh okay, well, so do we uh do we have any specific questions uh about any of the Yes. I have, I have two. Okay. On the students, as far as, you know, getting more students into our system, uh, if, a, if a homeschool child comes and they play sports and they participate, is there any way that the school system can count them as a quote student? Because if it's legal now for those children who play sports, I don't think so. I, 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 I don't think we get any credit for that, but there had to be allowed to uh, play sports. Okay. Can a homeschool student take one class at a school and then still be considered homeschool? And then be considered homeschool? Yeah, I mean, they're enrolled in the school, but they take one class at that school. And they play sports. Or um, that, is that possible? So, so Mr. Duke said they have to take one class. Most of those students are required to take one class okay. at the campus, but we do not get funded through the state for those students. That just gives them the, allows them to be eligible to participate in our on our school team. Okay. Also, I, as I was looking over here on the third page of all the little schools, of <coughs> all our schools here in Jackson County, um, I noticed that, that we have a lot of schools who are in the hundreds and, you know, hundreds and uh, 50 and less, or maybe less than 200 people, and which is what our state requires now. Uh, in the future, we'll probably be looking at, because some of these schools that are like 140 and 124 and 100, you know, it would be easier for them to go to the high schools, a little, uh, don't quote me in the paper, but if we close, close those schools and move them to the high schools, as far as we are, you know, it would be easier for us to do those smaller schools than it would be in the area of Paint Rock Valley. So what I'm saying is in the future, if it would be even worse, and we keep losing money, is that a possibility that we might have to look at? I think we have to look at all possibilities. I don't know what you know. That's for the big guys. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm just, you know, as far as money is concerned, that, you know, that, that, I think that's a fear. I hear that a lot in the county, that that's a fear because of the fact that money is getting higher and higher and higher. And as the years progress and continues on, then something's got to be done for our school system. And I think there will come a day when that will happen. Yeah. And because, like you said, of money purposes, it's, Nobody wants to do it. Yeah, you know, I know that even five years ago, the situation here was completely different. Completely different. <coughs> so we, we are going to have to adapt some ways. Uh, and, you know, I, I feel confident. Uh, Mr. Diggs has a, uh, you know, his finger on the pulse, and it, it, you know, you know, I, I think him and the board are going to make some good decisions. I, yeah, I'm not, I didn't mean to put anybody on the spot. It's just that out and about, I hear a lot of people already begin to see, you know, that that's a great possibility down the road. Five, ten years, and, you know, I, I hear that a lot, and I, I just thought that, you know, maybe as a community and as a as a county that we could really push if more people were 
aware that we can maybe push those homestead kids to get back in the city. We've got to get our kids back that we've lost. We lost, I'd say within the last year, we've lost 100 or 150 students in the North Santa Mountain and the Bridgeport area. And we need to get those kids back. We've, we've lost them for several reasons. One reason, we lost them, of course, they, they can go to Tennessee now and get two years of college. If they've got a, a average when they're senior, they go into junior college automatically. We lose several kids to that. We, we've lost some because uh, our, our school system just wasn't up to par to some others in the educational lines. And then we lost we, we, our principals need to be as good a recruiters as our athletic coaches. Yes. We got athletic coaches can get people in this county to play sports, but we some principals don't want to increase students because they're afraid they'll go up a class in in, in classification. They'll go up from two A to three A and things like that. We we need we need to eliminate that. I think you can already see that we're promoting our schools pretty good right now. I mean, they, our, our folks are doing a great job on social media and getting on the news and getting in the newspaper. We, we were on two different news channels last night and the front page of the paper yesterday. So, so I think our, our folks are doing a good job promoting ourselves. I, I know that we're, we're doing it, but we fell down there for a while and uh, we, we lost students and we need to get them back. Homeschooling, I can't understand the homeschooling issue. I think we should, if they, if they uh, play sports, they ought to be a, a student. They ought to not be eligible to play any sport just for homeschooling. I don't like that at all. And, and, and we've got a plan to go after some of these homeschool kids, but it's gonna cost us some money up front. But we we've, we've got a plan for that. It's just gonna it's gonna take some thought and preparation and some money up front. But one good thing is that that money up front that you have to, to spend to get those would be in the technology area, and we've got money in the technology capital area can be spent for technology. So we've got money for that, and we can spend that money and then feed by in, in turn feed the general fund. You know that'd be great, uh, especially since you can probably double your. You know it might be not that much money the first year, but after that, it'd be you know significant contributions to the general fund. I think what you're referring to is, is virtual scope. That is great. Yes, it's, you know, one, one thing that's great about our situation is, is that we, we're going to have to be very creative in what we're doing, and everybody's got to get on the same page, you know, we've got, you know, to, to, to do these creative solutions, and we just got to all, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity for us to come together and do something for the kids. And we just gotta, we gotta do it. Uh, well, that's all I got, if nobody got any questions. I've got one. Yes, I've been going to do things for 10 years. We lost approximately 900 students. That's a school size bigger than two of our high schools. So we got both students. That's, that's, that's deep. In the Stevenson area, the last 15 years, we've lost $2,000. In turn, we've lost population. Okay. So, jobs are exempted. The jobs are in the We've got to spread out here working with us, and we're not. We've got, we got to make some decisions. We're going to spend that money in the city, we're going to spend that money in the city, we're going to spend that money in the city, 
Appreciate it. And Jeff does a good job. He's a he is a numbers guy. Yeah. You know, it's not for everybody, but thankfully it's for him and we have him. So we we appreciate you, Jeff, for, for putting this together, answering our questions. Uh, I kind of neglect to, to thank Brad uh, Brad Arnold for recording our sessions and making those available on the internet. And I'm gonna tell you, we have some hits on that because I have people say, "Hey, I we watched the board meeting on online." And uh, sometimes they'd rather watch it from home a day or so later than be here, and, and that's good. You know, it's the system and, and the people on the system, uh, you know, and they're, they're vested because it's their kids and their grandkids that are, that are there. And, uh, we appreciate you, Brad, for putting that on there and getting that up and running. And Robert, for all you've done in the past with us, we appreciate that. So um, the next thing we have on on our agenda is our announcements and our next regular scheduled board meeting and our second budget uh, uh, presentation will be held on the 13th at 4.30 p.m. We have to make these convenient for people so we do one in the mornings and one in the evenings. And again, uh, we'll do that at the end of the meeting so that anybody wants to come in for it will we'll be able to do that. Uh, any other announcements? Hearing none, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Story makes a motion to adjourn. I second that. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.